Good morning, Calvary Chapel Hemet family. Pastor Danny here, here to share this morning's Heart to Home morning devotion with you guys. I'm super blessed, as always, to be a part of this ministry and to share it with what the Lord has put on my heart with you guys. And I'm praying that it blesses you guys just as much as uh, all this has blessed me. It's the day after Thanksgiving, right? Tummies are aching, families are heading out, and the countdown to the nation's largest holiday begins. And no, I'm not talking about Black Friday. Over the years, I've noticed something about Thanksgiving. It's kind of been forgotten about. Each passing year, the attention on Christmas and shopping comes sooner and sooner and sooner. I had people this year that were putting up Christmas decorations the day after Halloween. And it's like, hey, we cannot neglect the turkey, right? In the years past, Black Friday was an anticipated event that lasted one day only. People would camp outside stores for hours to get those once in a blue moon deals. But now you have Black Friday weeks and you have Cyber Mondays, which creates an entire weekend filled with shopping and self-fulfillment. In your prayers for Thanksgiving, it says, thank you, Lord, for all my blessings from the bottom of my heart. Now I'm going to go fill my shopping cart. It's easy to get caught up in these things all year long. And I think in some ways, Thanksgiving or giving thanks has become a forgotten thing. Now, even on Thanksgiving Day, because we've allowed ourselves to become distracted by so many other things. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 17 says this, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of earth. For you died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who appears in our life, then you will also appear with him in glory. So therefore, put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you, use, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is in all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And here it is. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The Bible is clear, right? That we should always be giving thanks. Not just on the last Thursday of November or even the last two months of the year. It's easy to forget God when things are good, when deals are hot, when food and football are on. Every day should be a day set aside to stop and really consider all the things that we have to be grateful for. How about, church family, instead of anticipating for Black Friday, we remember Good Friday. The day our Savior went to the cross for our salvation. It shouldn't just be Easter when we talk about or celebrate what Christ has done for us. It should be year round. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 20, it's a lengthy, a lengthy portion of scripture. But in that scripture, those portions of scriptures, God was giving instructions to the people for when they reached the promised land to not forget. To not forget 
what God has done for them. He, he, he reminds them uh, of the, the wandering for 40 years, the, the fact that he was doing it to humble them and to test them and to know what was in their heart. And so he humbled them. He allowed them to hunger in which he fed the manna, right? And he does all these things and he says all these things. And then in this, he warns them, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. He says, he continues on there, when you have eaten and you are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which there were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water who brought water for you out of the flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness with the man in which your fathers did not know my power and the might of my hand had gave me this wealth you shall remember the lord your god it is he who gives you the power to get wealth and that he may establish his covenant, which he swore with your fathers as it is this day, right? God commands them that they should not forget what God has done for them. God knew they were going to forget or he wouldn't have made this commandment, right? God knew that they were going to lose sight and start living how they felt they should live. God knew that we were going to have the tendency to forget where we came from, forget who we were and what he's done in our lives. And it's important that church family, that we build up a mindset of thankfulness and praise all year long, not just on this one specific day. God is not faithful on his promises just a few days out of the year. He's always faithful, 24 seven, 365 days. And as we should be to him, amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for just uh, the freedom that we have in this country to be able to celebrate holidays, Lord. And Father, we just pray that we can build up that mind of praise and thankfulness, Lord, in and, and each and every second, each and every moment that we can, not just on specific days, not just when we come to church, but Lord, every moment that we have, we can meditate on the things which you've done for us and the things that you're doing and the things that you're going to continue to do. Father, we give you all glory and honor. We love you, we praise you, and we ask you for a filling of your Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys.